Alright guys, here it is. So I think we need to do a little prayer or something for the all-white Mach 6 before we completely destroy them. Our Father who art in heaven. So if we're thinking about the daily trainer market, you have shoes like the Mach 6, and you have shoes like the Nova Blast, and then you also have those more traditional shoes like the Pegasus, the Clifton, and the Gel Cumulus, which are designed for hybrid walking and run use. So both these guys do come in at $140. Now, I can tell you right now, the main differences between these two, and this might be the answer to your shoe shopping question, so I don't even know if you're gonna need to watch the whole video, but Nova Blast here is firm. Mach 6 is soft. And of course, there's tons of other things that make these two unique, but that's gonna be the headline here. So far in the Nova Blast, through my 50 to 60 miles in this guy, it has given me a firm, structured ride. And the Mach 6 has pretty much been the opposite of that. This has been a little bit softer, squishier, and less stable. Now, the reason that we see that is because of the different midsole foams we have here. So both of these are going to be EVA foams, which is the classic training foam we see across most running shoes that are priced at $140. Though we are starting to see some new tech trickle down like TPEE, TPU, which is in the Sockety Ride, all these different types of foams, but EVA is the base for both of these blends here. But what sets the Mach 6 foam apart from the Nova Blast foam is that the EVA in the Mach 6 has gone through a super critical process. So that means there's been gas injected into here. It's usually nitrogen. I'm not sure exactly what gas Hoka injects into this guy here, but it gives it a softer, bouncier feel. It makes it a little bit airy. It also can make it have a little bit of a dense feeling, not dense in a bad way, dense in a soft way like you might get from a waterbed. Now ASICS here is not transparent about what goes into this blend. They call it FF Blast Plus. That Hoka blend is not named. It's unbranded EVA. And this guy here, the FF Blast Plus, it's what they call all of their main training foams. So the Gel Nimbus, which is their Max Cushion Relax Recovery shoe has it. The Gel Cumulus has it. A few of the other shoes have it. And it has a different ride and different feeling in all the shoes. So what I can tell you is in here, it's a little bit more structured, a little bit firmer. This is not gonna be a very flexible shoe at all. And it does offer a ton of protection. You got 42 or 41 and a half millimeters in the heel back here. And then in the front, you have 34 millimeters for an eight millimeter drop. Now the Mach 6 is a little bit lower stack. This guy is coming in at 37 millimeters in the heel and 32 millimeters in the forefoot, which is why it also makes sense that for this year's version of the shoes, a lot of people are comparing these. The Nova Blast has always been that higher stack, bouncier, more fun daily trainer. The Mach historically has been a little bit of a lighter shoe, not as much stack. The previous generation was at about 30 millimeters, so they bumped it up a ton in here and it looks like Hoka is trying to make the shoe compete with the Nova Blast. Now neither of these shoes are hugely rockered so if we look at the geometry of the bottom here some shoes have a super aggressive curve on the bottom and specifically on the back. This one has a nice little bit of a rocker up front but compared to some other shoes like the Saucony shoes and the race shoes this isn't too aggressive. Same thing with the Nova Blast here you got a nice little toe spring up in the front but this is an even flatter shoe than the Mach. Now one of the issues I've had so far with this midsole is that there's a little bit of a disconnected feeling. So depending on where you land on here, so far it's given me this feeling where sometimes it feels like this back bulge out here is catching first and then the front slams down. Now I did do a two hour long run with the shoe and I didn't have a ton of issues with that. It kind of melted away, but at certain paces and especially for walking, the shape of this midsole was not doing the shoe any favors. I do think they could fix that with a rocker, but a6 has not made the Nova Blast a super rockered shoe, so I'm not sure what they'll do with the Nova Blast 5. Now, Mach 6 does not have that issue. You can see there is a little bit of that cutout and a little bit of that disconnected thing right here, but running and walking, I did not feel any sort of disjointed feeling. This is a very smooth ride still. That's what the Mach 5 was characterized by, a nice rolling ride where there was a little bit of a firmer rocker to it because the last version of the shoe had a standard EVA on the bottom, which gave it that nice smooth roll through. 
This guy is more characterized by the soft, bouncy foam that we see here, not so much by any sort of midsole geometry on the bottom. Now you can see that the Nova Blast, the stack height is taller, yes, but it also just has a lot more foam. Now this is one of those things that doesn't always show up in the numbers, and that's how they contour the foam around the back of the shoe here, so how much we're gonna get jutting off the back here, and then also how much foam wraps up the sidewalls. So brands will report stack height, and by the way, guys, I use the Running Warehouse stack height numbers because they do all their testing in-house independently, but brands or Running Warehouse or whoever can measure the shoes and tell you how tall it is, but it doesn't tell you how wide the shoe is. It doesn't tell you how much stability you're gonna be getting from the foam in the back, how much wrap you're gonna be getting. And so these two shoes here have two different takes on the midsole foam, and that's because there's slightly different spirits to them, right? Mach 6 designed to be lighter, faster. Nova Blast 4 here designed to be more protective, comfortable, and stable. So because of that, you can see the Nova Blast pushes out the foam a lot more in the back. That's gonna give it some nice stability here, which I have felt through the first 50, 60 miles. And we also get the foam wrapping up the sidewalls a ton. Mach 6, your foot sits probably right where this ridge line is here. So you get a little bit of that foam wrap, but nothing to add too much stability here. And then also pushing out on the back, you'll see the mock doesn't have a whole lot of that caboose action going. Whereas the Nova Blast, you get, you can see where my, my fingers, where your heel would be, you get a good, I don't know, inch, 0.75 of an inch of foam off the back here. And again, that's gonna give you some more stability for those landings. And it makes this a really nice choice for heel striking in the back of the platform here. You get some nice protection and then boom, roll through. At some paces, like I said, you slam that front down. But with this shoe, honestly, it's felt better so far when I kind of slam the heel down. So this is a nice shoe for heel strikers. And now what's interesting about comparing these two is that what you're seeing on the Asics here is a design feature that Hoka pioneered. They're the ones who started pushing the foam out the back. They're the ones who started doing this little slit in the middle, but on the Mach 6, it's gone. So, but yeah, Mach 6 had to switch the style up because everybody was biting it. You're not gonna get too much extra going on with the foam. And so in general, what you're seeing here is a microcosm of both of these shoes, right? Nova Blast is very built up. Some would say overbuilt, over-engineered for what it is, which isn't a bad thing at $140. You're getting a ton of value all this foam, all the structure to the upper, which we'll get into in a second. Mach 6 is, yes, 37 millimeters of stack, but a little bit more streamlined, a little bit simpler. There's a little bit less going on with the Mach 6, which I always talk about trade-offs, guys, has good and bad sides to it because it makes it fun and fast, but it's also made this a pretty unstable ride, which is surprising for Hoka, given that the Mach 5 was a pretty stable shoe. Now, heading up to the upper here, Mach 5's upper is really nice and lightweight. Everything about the shoe is pretty lightweight. If we take a look at the A6 Nova Blast upper here, it's a little bit softer, a little bit more built up. And today I was running in maybe 65, 70 degree weather. I did feel my foot starting to heat up a little bit. I was wearing my normal running socks. Actually, no, I wasn't. I was wearing those janky Amazon brand running socks. So. I'm not sure, maybe it could be the running socks. I'll make sure to use my features tomorrow on the treadmill so that we can see. That's a good control environment to do a comparison. But I do know Asics has some issues with the upper overheating, specifically my gel Nimbus. And this one looks very similar. You got that t-shirt cloth material versus on the Mach 6 here. Let's do that little audio test. Uh, I gotta bring it back here. Shoe ASMR, watch this. So I'm gonna scratch the upper of the Mach 6. Now let me scratch the upper of the Nova Blast real quick. You can hear the difference there. The Nova Blast 4 is much softer. It's like a worn in old shirt that you have in your drawer from college versus the Nova Blast 4 here. This is almost, and I've had a few of these sport uppers recently that feel like this, but this almost feels like a camping chair or something. So the comfort in the upper, definitely gonna go to the Nova Blast, but the breathability and airiness, that goes to the Hoka. Now around the back here, we got padding galore on the Nova Blast, and I'm not sure how they added this much padding to a shoe and kept it at a pretty light weight. We'll do a weight comparison, but the, I was impressed by the weight given the padding here. They don't have too much padding on the tongue, which is, again, kind of surprised me. We do see that nice little 
little gusset so the tongue is tied down inside. Lockdown has been pretty solid on both of these. And then in the Mach, again, not a ton of padding. Honestly, there's some race shoes with more padding than the Mach 6 has now, but it's it's definitely not a it's not a harsh upper or anything like that. It just doesn't have a ton of padding, which is a direction we're seeing the market go in in general. Some of these race shoes have more built up uppers. Let me pull one for a sec just to show you. So this is the Diodora Gara here, which I'm actually considering racing my April marathon in this guy, but you can see the padding around the upper is really similar. The Gara might actually have a little bit more padding. So Hoka has gone relative to what the market standard is right now, pretty minimal with the padding of the upper here. And then you also got that nice gusseted tongue. Now I have not had any issues with heel slippage or anything. I will say Nova Blast 4 in general, feels like a roomier upper, a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more room in the toe box. We will do a fit and feel comparison, but if you were looking for comfort with an upper, if you have a little bit wider foot, this is likely gonna be the better choice. The Mach 6, we've had some sizing issues with this guy. So I bought this one as soon as it came out and then Hoka sent me a different pair and they fit completely differently. This one, which you will see in a sec, my toe is all the way at the end here. The other pair, I had probably a centimeter more and they're both 10.5 US men. So the sizing on these is super variable. The other pair was in a blue color. And of course this is in the white, so I'm not sure if they're different production runs across the different colors colorways that are making the sizing off, but that is something to note. You might need to size up, you might need to size down because those two shoes fit differently. And a final note on the laces here, very similar laces. Mach 6, slightly stretchier. Nova Blast, slightly softer. Both of these are easy to tie though, and they stay tied. No weirdness going on. Now heading down to the outsole. So I have about 30 miles on the Mach 6 so far, and this was the big headline of this generation compared to the Mach 5 is that they added rubber. But we do have the exposed foam out in the back. I said it before, but it's a curious choice to have the exposed foam when you have so much rubber, you could just move some from the middle to the back. We might see some wear and tear there. I'm still not sure exactly how bad it will be given that my Mach 5 held up pretty well, but that's not just a Hoka problem. The Nova Blast has the exposed foam in the same exact area. We have a few more miles on the Nova Blast here and you can see we're wearing it down pretty good. The Nova Blast is also a shoe that encourages you to land there because of how this caboose is jutting out. So it really is meant for heel striking or performs well for heel striking. So it's ironic that they left that area exposed. Mach 6 isn't designed for heel striking necessarily, but this should work well for a variety of mechanics, but you're gonna see some wear and tear there as well. Now, I had a chance to take the ASICs out in the rain. I think it was yesterday or the day before. It was two days ago for my long run, and the rubber was just okay. I was slipping and sliding a little bit, which I was not expecting at all. And so the rubber grip on this isn't great, and I haven't taken this out in the rain yet, and I really don't want to because I mean, just look at it. But if it is raining tomorrow, I think we'll probably have to do it. I really want to see how this grip performs in the rain, given that the Mach 5 didn't have any traction down here. And then a final note before we do a fit and feel try on, looking at the bottom here, you can see how much wider the Nova Blast 4 is and the forefoot here. So they call this the trampoline pad, and it really has a big area for you to land on, both in the front and in the back, but mostly in the front here. And so tons of width and what that's going to do is again give a really stable ride and especially paired with the firmer foam and the Nova Blast it does a nice job at directing the foot forward and not having any instability on landing. Now Mach 5 doesn't have as wide of a platform and the foam doesn't peak out as much so a little bit less to land on and you got to be a little bit more cautious with your step in this than the Nova Blast. I did want to point out on the bottom here something that I'm not exactly sure what this design feature is for but you can see it looks like a Sam I took a sword and just zip, took off a little layer of foam. So if you know what that's for, maybe it's for stability, maybe it's a modified version of what a lot of these marathon racing shoes have where they do that little cutout in the middle. New Balance has that with their energy arc. I'm not really sure what it's doing. So if you know that, drop a comment below. All right guys, so let's do a quick fit and feel comparison in the office here. And then I gotta go to bed. It is, it's getting late here. So we will pop these on for a fit and feel. And then tomorrow, bright and early, we'll take these out. For a run. All right, guys, slipping the Nova Blast 4 on, and man, this really is a comfortable shoe. Or if I can get the tongue right, the upper just cradles the foot nicely around here in the back. You got that elf heel thing. I forgot to mention that earlier. You got that elf heel vibe on both of these shoes, but my foot just sits in here 
super nicely. And that's why when I did that 22 mile long run, I didn't have any problems. I didn't have any complaints. It just felt great for the whole time. Now putting these on and lacing them up here, everything about the upper is soft. Now the foam, can't say the same thing here, but the vibe of this upper to the touch, it's like that nice t-shirt and then you got the padding and the laces. It's a nice feeling to touch soft laces for a change because a lot of these performance laces are a little bit rougher. Now putting on the Mach 6 here. And one thing interesting is that this is not actually white. This is a mint green, super light mint green, which you can see next to the Hoka here. But it's funny because both of these brands are known for having super loud designs and I got two very muted shoes here. But yeah, in the 10 and a half now, you guys have been following the saga of the Hoka sizing issue probably, but the 10 and a halfs that I got here, these are pretty tight. The right one is a little bit better, that's why I chose to do it this way. My toe ends about here in the Nova Blast. I got a lot more room in the Nova Blast. This is actually pretty crazy. You can see I can push this all the way down. Yeah, I can push all the way down here. In the Hoka, I cannot do that, I'm right at the edge. So these fit a lot differently. Nova Blast, you could probably size down half. I would not do that personally. But if you like a snug fit, if you don't like having extra room, you might be able to do that. But I would I would go true to size. I go to true to size and everything, and I'm typically good. But one thing that's interesting, guys, and I ran in this shoe today, Tobo Cyclone 2. You can see the toe box up here is a lot wider, and it has this flat vibe going on at the front. So this was a cool shoe to run in, because I've never run in the roomy toe box setting like this before. A6 Nova Blast is a little bit better than the Mach 6, but neither of these are particularly roomy toe boxes. Now standing and doing a little bit of walking here, neither of these are gonna be the best for walking and for standing. So gel cumulus, again, is gonna be that better choice for you than the Nova Blast if you want an ASIC shoe that's designed for everyday activities. This guy is really running only. Mach 6, kind of a, the same thing here, and Mach 5 was okay for walking on errands. This guy feels a little bit narrower than the Mach, and I think they've shaved off some foam around the back, around the sides, and as I'm standing on it, it feels a little bit unstable, even for standing. It's not super unstable like a race shoe might be, but if you're getting a running shoe and you specifically know you want to use it for a lot of walking and errands, I wouldn't go for the Mach. There are better choices for that, like the New Balance Rebel or even New Balance 1080, Nike Pegasus. This is not a shoe with 37 millimeters of foam out in the heel here that I would want to use a ton for all that. Though the foam itself is decently comfortable. I prefer something a little bit firmer. My top pick for a running shoe that can do walking and errands is the Brooks Ghost Max. But between these two, Mach 5 definitely feels more natural on foot. It feels more like a regular sneaker than the Nova Blast. Nova Blast with this big chunky heel, I'm not gonna go to school pickup in this. And if you look at how much this foam is flaring out, it feels like this is designed purpose made for running with this weird flare. It kind of looks like a clown shoe or something from the top. And then a question I've been getting recently is midfoot arch. So apparently I learned by reading the comments today, and by the way guys, thank you for leaving all the comments and questions, I'm back. I relapsed into reading comments, so I'm back into reading comments and I'll try to respond to all the back ordered or back dated comments over the weekend. But our friends in the comments told me that the Rebel V4 has a bump up in the arch here that I wore it to the park today to see if I could feel it, and I did. It wasn't super uncomfortable for me, but I will note if you have flat arches, Rebel V4 are not gonna be the shoe for you. Neither of these guys have that poking up feeling. They're both pretty comfortable on step in. Because of the soft foam of the mock, it's a little bit more comfortable overall, but the stability goes to the Nova Blast. All right guys, I'm gonna finish up my late night pancakes, and then it's gonna be time tomorrow to do a run in these. I'm hoping to get another 20 mile day. A lot of good mileage, whatever number we hit. It's also Mason's birthday tomorrow, so that'll be fun. But last thing I want to show you as I take these off, because this is another question I get, is removable insoles. So, Mach 6, we got the removable insole in this guy. And then, no blast. Let's see. Got to put the recovery slides back on. Yes, this has the removable insole as well. Alright guys, on that note, I'll see you in the AM.
All right, guys, it's game time here. Let's do it. Oh, I didn't know it would be raining. It's another spring morning, but it is wet. It's also Mason's birthday, but we will play outside in any weather. Okay, so this morning, goal is 12 miles total across both of these shoes. I think I'll probably do first hour or so in the Nova Blast, and then I'll switch into the Mach 6 for the rest of the run. So probably about eight miles in the Nova Blast and then four miles in the Mach 6. So what I want to test this morning is how both of these feel when I'm just cruising at a nice aerobic pace and then for the Mach 6, how does it feel when I'm a little bit tired? Because end of a 12 mile run is gonna be about 90 minutes and I did do one 12 mile run with the Mach 6 but I wasn't feeling as beat up as I am this morning. Yesterday I had a 22 mile day and the mileage is just a little bit high right now. So that's gonna be the goal this morning. How do these guys feel when I'm cruising? Also it's gonna be good to get a little bit more mileage on the Nova Blast because we can start checking the durability. And then with the Mach, it's been bouncy and bopping me along, but can it offer enough support for one of these rainy mornings? I know we're gonna be on the treadmill, but <laughs> the, the rain is a vibe today. It's more of a mindset. And guys, I've said this before, but this might have to go in the new rule book. Number one rule of marathon training is don't be a hero, man. I could be a hero and try to do these morning runs outside in the dark and the cold, but I'm not, there's, there's no reason for that. Treadmills exist for a reason. It's like a max cushion shoe. These protective shoes exist for a reason to make it easier for us to hit our mileage goals. My goal isn't to make things as hard as possible. Maybe that'll be a goal for me one day, but my goal is to hit the mileage in as much comfort as I can. And shoes like the Mach 6 and Nova Blast help us do that. And that's why these brands add more stack, right? And that's why treadmills exist. All right, guys. I'm going to get in the zone. See you in a bit. All right, we're here. And it's 514. I woke up at 455. Sometimes I wish the ride were just a little bit farther so I had more time to sit here with the heat seat on and the nice warm car but I can do that in my 30s all right let's go so I've had these cloud monsters for about I don't know how long now. Almost two years, I think. Yeah, I got them in July 2022. And they're my go-to everyday shoes. You can see them, I literally wear these guys every day. Look how beat up they are. But the reason I do that is because they don't have too much stack to feel unwieldy and tippy. And they have the perfect amount of comfort with these pods. And if you compare it to a shoe like the Nova Blast here, which I'm gonna put on, I call this type of shoe a running, running shoe because it only really feels good and normal when you're running. I do not like having this on my feet when I'm walking and doing other normal life activities. However, it is extremely comfortable and even just putting it on here after the Cloud Monster, it's a different type of foot experience. So this is not Asics comfort shoe in the lineup. That's what they have the Nimbus for. But the upper on this feels a little bit inspired by the Nimbus series. It's interesting because at $140, the shoe isn't competing with those max cushion shoes. Those are priced at $160, but there is a lot of value that you're getting here. I think this is a really interesting shoe because with the Cumulus at 140 and then this at 140, Asics is one of the only brands to have two daily trainers competing 
and the same segment, but they are two super different shoes. Let me know, guys, if you are interested in me testing the Gel Cumulus 26, by the way, because I could get that in here soon, if so. All right, we're gonna pop on the treadmill, and then I'll be back with an analysis at some point. All right, just finished up in the Nova Blast eight miles. Let's see what we got here. Of course, we got to recalibrate. Eight miles at in around an eight flat pace. Now it's time to get the Hoka Mach 6 on. Guys, this Nova Blast feels like if someone went back to 2007 and designed what they thought a running shoe of the future would look like. In the way that how much foam you have here and i know it's a visual effect too because they're wrapping it up the sides but how much foam you have here it's not just a visual effect you can really feel not just how wide the platform is but how long and with this shoe it feels like no matter how i land whether i smash the heel i'm running with terrible form or i'm running more up to the forefoot the shoe just works no matter what and yes it's a little bit awkward because of how much foam you have when you're going slower but if you're just bopping along, man, I don't know if there's any better shoe out there for that. Now, the thing is, with the Nova Blast, it's not going to be like a Saucony Triumph or it's not going to be like a Gel Nimbus or a 1080. It doesn't have that super soft, forgiving feel, but it's more about the way that they've shaped the foam. And oftentimes we think about rockers and we think of having a nice rocker curved geometry here as the main way we can use the foam's shape to get something different out of the ride. But what ASICS is showing here is that it's not just a rocker, this doesn't really have a rocker, but it's the width of the foam, it's the height of the foam on the sidewalls, it's how much foam you have hanging off the back, it's this bulge up front. There's so many variables, there's so many different ways we could change the foam to get something interesting or different out of the ride and so i think that's probably the biggest thing i'm learning so far about the nova blast and about how we can analyze and evaluate shoes a little bit better it's not just about the rocker anymore now switching into the mach 6 here this guy has a little bit of sizing issues for me i'm gonna have to say it in every video i do with the mach 6 you might have to size up you might have to size down this pair is super snug on me in 10 and a half. I tried a different pair in 10 and a half and a different colorway that was loose. So I'm not quite sure. But putting these on, these feel way more like a normal sneaker to me. That Nova Blast feels like I put on a, a moon boot or something, a moon sneaker. I think if they were to design a sneaker to do a half marathon on the moon, that would be the Nova Blast. All right, plan for the Mach 6. We're just gonna get, we're gonna get four miles in. Might push the pace if I'm feeling good. Might just leave the treadmill on cruise control. Let's do it. Whew, man, I'm feeling good today. All right, let's see what we got here. Push the pace a little bit at the end. Oh, well, that's gonna be an issue. <laughs> I think I might've recorded it as a run instead of an indoor run. Well, we got four miles at, it took 29 minutes. Anyway, four miles in the Mach 4, 4 miles in the Mach 6. Man, this is going to annoy me. Technology is supposed to make things easier. I don't like when it makes things harder. <sighs> 
fast shoe. This is a fast shoe. This guy, that is not a fast shoe. Now, these are both everyday running shoes, daily trainers that are priced at $140. But that's going to be another key difference between them, guys. Like I said last night, this guy is firm. This guy is soft. This guy is slow. This guy is fast. It's like one of those riddles there poems they say to Reevesy boy during story time he was singing it the other day slow 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 fast 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 firm 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 soft 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 big 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 small 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 short 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 tall 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 <laughs> that one is really gonna get them triggered I already know that all right This is a running shoe review channel, not a nursery rhyme channel. If I wanted nursery rhymes, I would go to the Wake County Public Library channel. By the way, guys, if you are a parent with small kids, check out the Wake County Public Library YouTube channel. We don't really let our kids watch TV much, but in those emergencies, you guys know what I'm talking about. The story time videos that they have from the Wake County Public Library are the best. So it's really just a librarian reading to kids and singing there's no weird jump cuts there's no peppa pig animated things jumping out at people it's just nice calm energy actually i'll i'll if i remember i'll link it in the description so you guys can check it out hi right. we gotta get home for birthday time Hobby jogger hat down. We still got a few of these left, guys. I'll drop the link in the description as well. So if you want a hobby jogger hat, 30 bucks. I'm trying to get rid of these so I can get some new merch going. All right, guys, so we started off the run with the eight miles in the Nova Blast 4. And I always like doing the lower stack shoe first. But today, we did the higher stack shoe first. We did the more protective supportive shoe first and I'm glad I started off with this guy first because I was in that recovery zone just moving the legs doing some easy mileage some relaxed mileage and this is a nice shoe for that and what kept popping in my head is that quote is it from Batman where it's like it's not the hero you want but the hero you need he's not who Gotham wants he's who Gotham needs that's what this shoe is and don't let the light bright springy blue colors fool you here this is not the shoe you want nobody wants this shoe do not get this shoe unless you need it and what this is going to offer people who need it is a lot of protection a lot of support and for any type of high mileage running you need a shoe in your rotation like this and what's so interesting about this shoe versus a lot of the other max cushion shoes that i've tried and yes this is a max cushion shoe even though they are positioning them more as a daily trainer and the lineage has more of that heritage as everyday running shoes but what you're going to get out of here is not a super soft squishy foam and i'm actually realizing now i have been on the hunt for months guys months ever since i found out in july i did that video up outside the dunkin dones in wellfleet people are still watching the, the video i did please don't kill the endorphin shift and then Saucony killed it i've been on the hunt for months for a shoe that could replace the endorphin shift and now if you guys are familiar with the Saucony endorphin shift it's got a traditional eva foam it's not it's as even as soft as this which is more of an eva blend it's got a 39 millimeter stack up in the heel and a low drop it's got a really nice roll to it now this doesn't have that super low drop this doesn't have that same roll but what it has is with that shoe i could run slow in it i could run fast in it but no matter how i ran it always felt supportive and when i was super fatigued when i was super beat up i knew i could turn to that shoe and i would feel protected and so that's exactly what you're going to be getting out of this shoe it's a lot of protection i think this might be liked a little bit more by a lot of runners than the shift 3 the shift 3 was more niche it was really only bigger runners who got a ton of benefit out of that shoe i think runners of all sizes will love this shoe if you are running high mileage and want something super protective now if you don't need something protective if you like more minimalist shoes more nimble shoes you don't like tall stack shoes 
this shoe is not gonna be for you. It does run like every single bit of that 42 millimeters in the heel. It's not a nimble shoe. It feels like you got some, I don't know, mattresses tied to the bottom of your feet or something as you're running along there. So if you don't like the feeling of a lot of foam, this guy's not gonna be for you. This is a completely different story. This guy is light. It's got a nice bounce to it. It's fast, fast, fast versus slow, slow, slow for that Nova Blast. And where the Nova Blast felt great as I was mashing the heels, bopping along, this thing makes me wanna run fast. And every single time I've put this on, I think my pace has been in the sevens, whether I wanted it to be or not. And so that's what you're gonna be getting out of this. If you want something lighter weight, a little bit faster, not a ton of foam, that's what you're getting here. But guys, the key difference between this and the Nova Blast, and going back to that Endorphin Shift 3, right? That was also a mild stability shoe. The Shift 3 had this plastic piece out in the back that locked the heel into place. The Nova Blast doesn't have that, but because it has that wider base that offers a lot of support, with this, rather than feeling like you're running on top of mattresses, it almost feels like you're trying to land on top of a hot dog. And I said this in a video a few days ago, but this is a super fun shoe. And oftentimes with fun, we see that trade off where you don't get as much support and stability. And so that's what you're gonna be getting here. Not a ton of support, not a ton of stability, but fun and fast. And so when I did the four miles in this this morning, I set the treadmill to the same pace as when I came off with the Nova Blast 4. But as I warmed up into it, and as I just kept getting the bounce, from this thing, I kept increasing the pace, increasing the pace, increasing the pace, and it turned into a little bit of an unplanned progression. So that was that was fun. Every time I've run in the shoe, it's been that. I've run faster than I'd planned. And I remember vividly with the Mach 5, the last version of this, I would strap on that thing because it was a super versatile shoe. I would do these Wednesday 10 mile recovery runs. And oftentimes I would end those Wednesday recovery runs at a half marathon pace. I would be start out the run at an 840 pace and I'd finish it at a 610, six flat pace. And this shoe has that same spirit, that same character, that same ethos. And even though it is a lot different than the Mach 5, it's lost some of that stability. It's gone up in stack. It has that same goading you on. It's gonna urge you to push the pace a little bit. And so that's what you're gonna be getting out of this guy, fast, fun, friendly for a lot of runners out there. This is gonna be a hit. This is gonna be a crowd pleaser. Now, the opposite of that Nova Blast, this is not the shoe that you need. This is the shoe that you want. So I think a lot of people, after more reviews start trickling out onto the forums, and, and I'm gonna keep singing the praises of the shoe because it's fun, but as people get more excited about the shoe, a lot of people are gonna want it, and it's not gonna be the best option for every day, despite the stack. I wouldn't want to run in this shoe every day. I need to have a shoe like the Nova Blast, like the Shift 3 for high mileage training and for a lot of efforts I have. And I do need some more stability on certain days. When I'm doing recovery runs, when I'm not running with the best form, I'm gonna need some more support than this offers. So that is something to think about. This is a fun shoe, but it's not the shoe that you need for every day. So it's really gonna depend on how much you're running. And I'll get into this later and I'll also pull some other examples of shoes that you can pair with these. But two great shoes, super different use cases, super different characters. They're gonna be good for different times of training. All right, so we are now backing up the driveway here. Take one last look at this Nova Blast as I back in because even just holding it in my hand, it feels so much bigger, so much more built up, so much wider, I could barely get my hand around this foam here than the Mach 6. And so once we get inside later today, it's Mace's birthday, so I'm gonna chill with the fam, driver to school, but at some point later today, I wanna pop these guys on the scale and then do a second run and talk through who these are gonna be best for and what you should be pairing them with. All right, guys, I'll see you later. All right, guys, so it is 12.05, about to eat lunch and get ahead on some work. But as promised, I wanted to walk you through 
the key differences of these in terms of the protectiveness on the ride and then where both of these fit in the broader daily trainer market. So as I mentioned, this Nova Blast here, this is going to be the super protective option. And some of the other shoes that I pulled out here that are the same spirit as this, Saucony Endorphin Speed 4. Now, this is a plated shoe. It's got the plastic plate in here, and it's more so designed for speed training than it is for everyday miles. However, a lot of people use the Speed 3 and the Speed 4 for everyday miles. I put a 100-mile week test on this guy and it did fairly well. It wasn't my favorite shoe to run in, but the geometry of it reminds me a lot of the Nova Blast 4. They both have this decoupled feeling where you got the chunky heel back here, and you can see they both actually have that split heel, that hoka hoof that we've been talking about. But similar to the Nova Blast in how this shoe is offering a lot of protection and designed to be a shoe more for comfort and longer miles. Now, if we think about what the Mach 6 is offering, this is more of that fast lightweight everyday shoe and so what would be more similar to that is the rebel v4 now this is one of my favorite shoes that i've run in over the past few months i also did a 100 mile week with this guy and it's going to be a little bit lower stack than the mach 6 let in a little more ground feel the foam is probably just about as soft but you get less of it up in the forefoot here so forefoot of the rebel is 24 versus mach 6 is 32. so there's an eight millimeter difference between these two and you can see it here Mach 6 is a lot more stacked, but both of these are those fun, bouncy options. Protection and stability and support isn't the name of the game with these guys. Whereas with a shoe like the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4 and Nova Blast, these are protective and stable. And so another alternative to the Nova Blast would be a shoe like the New Balance 1080 V13. Now, this is a lot softer than the Nova Blast here, and it also isn't gonna be as good for picking up the pace, but if you're looking for that protective feeling and you don't want a firm shoe like the Noble Blast is, the 1080 V13 is gonna be a really nice choice. Now I have 300 miles on this guy. You can see I've completely burned through the outsole here and it's still going strong. It's a nice and durable shoe. And interestingly enough, it actually has less stack than the Nova Blast here. Now, a lot of us think of the 1080 as a max cushion shoe, and we don't think of the Nova Blast necessarily as that. And you can see from the top here, Nova Blast still has a much wider base here, but 1080 has that max cushion feel. This is more than enough stack and protection for me. I'm excited to try the more V5 coming out of New Balance this year, but if you want that softer max cushion option, this is gonna be a great alternative to the Nova Blast. And finally, last shoe that's given me similar vibes to the Nova Blast 4 here is the Adidas Supernova Rise. Now I have about 30 to 40 miles on this and this is a really nice, it's a softer shoe similar to the 1080 though not as soft. And the reason why it's given me similar vibes to the Nova Blast is because what they've done here with the bottom of the foam, so they have these, Adidas is calling them rods, but they're really, it's just pieces of EVA on the bottom that add some stability here. And then out in the back, they don't have the Hoka hoof but they have this weird chunk of, again, of EVA. Now, this is not my favorite part of the shoe, and it does encourage you to heel strike a little bit more than necessary. However, this makes it a very stable ride. I actually think this might be a nice up-tempo or speed training option for a runner who needs some more stability and who doesn't want a super lightweight low shoe because the Dream Strike Plus foam here does have a nice little pop. So if you're looking for an option for daily miles that has nice stability and support, but not necessarily as much foam as we get in the Nova Blast, and also not as firm as the Nova Blast, then the Supernova Rise could be the shoot for you. And then the last shoe I wanted to pull out here that's giving me similar vibes to the Mach 6 is our old friend, the Nike Pegasus. And I said this the other day, but the Hoka Mach 6 is, to me, seems like the perfect modern version of the Nike Pegasus. Now, a lot of runners don't like the 10 millimeter drop that the Pegasus has, the Mach 6 fixes that. A lot of runners say that this React foam that's in the Pegasus isn't the most exciting, which I agree with, the Mach 6 fixes that. The last common complaint about the Pegasus here is that there's not enough foam in the forefoot, it's a little bit too much ground feel, and the Mach 6 fixes that. It's basically everything that the Pegasus doesn't do that's what you're gonna get out of the Mach 6. I don't think durability is gonna be as great. We can look just here on the bottom with the outsoles here. The Pegasus has a ton of rubber. I've had this guy for, I think almost two years now. I wasn't running in it for all of those two years, but put on a ton of 
walking and travel miles and it's still in really good shape. Mach 6, of course, with the exposed foam, not going to be as great. But if you're looking for a modern take on the daily trainer and want something lighter weight and a little more fun than the Pegasus, but still that same neutral feeling where you're not getting a lot of extra bells and whistles, like everything on this side of the table has, right? These are tons of bells and whistles, tons of extra tech, lots of foam, lots of padding, weird rods, weird plates. Not this side of the table, simple, a little more no frills or low frills, but fun and fast. And that's what you're gonna be getting out of the Mach 6. So if you're a fan of the Pegasus, want something a little bit more fun, a little bit more bounce, that's gonna be the Hoka Mach 6 here. All right, guys, it is lunchtime. I'll see you in a bit for run number two. 124, soccer net assembly time. Happy birthday, Mace. All right, guys, 4 p.m., time for the second run. Let's do it. All right, guys, plan for the run, eight miles. I might switch into the Mach 6, but I'm going to start off in the Nova Blast. The wet weather grip on these things is absolutely horrible. I'm just doing a little warm up here. But eight miles total, maybe I'll test the Mach 6 grip, depending on how everything's going with our stroller situation. You want to see? Yeah. All right guys, so we're just about halfway through here. We just finished four miles, 8.27 pace with the stroller. Now the grip on these Nova Blast 4 is absolutely terrible. Look at this. And I'm not sure if you can see, but this is definitely the weak point of the shoe. So it's a little wet out here today, a little rainy or misty. It was raining earlier. Let me do a little comparison for you guys. I'm ice skating. I can moonwalk. I can shuffle. This is not a good grip shoe. So I'm gonna switch into the Mach 6 and do something I never do, which is take an all white shoe into the rain. Now this guy here has already gotten a little mud damage, but it's all in the name of science, I guess, and all good things must come to an end. I'm sorry, Jim. I know my guy Jimmy D, who drinks athletic and likes John G also likes his shoes clean. So, Jim, I'm sorry. I pray that you forgive me. Just remember, it's all in the name of getting to the bottom of what's good and what's not with these shoes. Uh, all right, guys, here it is. So, I think we need to do a little prayer or something for the all-white Mach 6 before we completely destroy them. Our Father, who art in heaven, Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I don't know if I got that completely 100% correct, but it's pretty similar. All right, for the ride here, every time I lace up these Mach 6s. And I know you guys think I'm about to say they're tight. No, well yes, they are tight. That's not what I'm about to say. Every time I lace these up now, I am just amped to run in them. This is such a fun shoe, and it's starting to rival the Rebel V3 for one of my top shoes of the year. Now it doesn't have as much ground feel as I like in a favorite favorite shoe, but right now, like I told you guys yesterday in that Topo Cyclone video, we are not in a ground feel strength building phase. We are in a protection phase. And this is a very protective but fun and bouncy shoe. So I'm gonna get in trouble. What time is it? It's it's 4.54. I'm supposed to be home for dinner by five. That's not gonna happen. Four miles is gonna take about 30 minutes. So we're gonna try to do this as fast as possible. We now got our speedsters on. So let's rock.
I realized I forgot to say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's the part that we forgot. All right, guys, got another four miles, eight total. This time we were at a seven, was that 37? No, 757 pace. I told you, anytime I put on the Mach 6, I go faster. Honestly, guys, the damage on these isn't too bad, especially compared to the A6 here. A6 got absolutely rocked. The Mach 6, we did okay. Give us this day our daily bread. Oh wait, before I take these hokas off, look at this. Grip is much better, you can just hear it. Listen to this. This is like no grip on this rubber versus the Mach 6. Way more grip on the rubber of the Mach 6. Uh, terrible rubber, pretty good rubber actually. Not as good as the Adidas and Puma, but really good. All right guys, it is 8.19. Wasn't able to do the wrap up outside because I was late for dinner and I did not want to get grounded. So let's throw these guys on the scale quickly to do a QA check and a weigh in between both of them. And then I'm actually gonna put a magazine on top of this, but and then we'll do the wrap up and I'm gonna break down after my 20 miles of running today across these shoes, this shoe and that shoe. Ignore that pile of laundry that I need to deal with back there. But across these two shoes, which one is gonna be best for most runners? So let's do this way in quickly. What's the best magazine? Best magazine for protecting our scale. All right guys, so right shoe of Hokamok 6 is about 240 grams. And left shoe, sitting at 238.5 that's actually really good it's just that it's just that the left shoe is a lot tighter than it should be and also i did test another pair of these that came in about 10 grams heavier and now for the nova blast we got the left shoe here 294 grams so that is a lot heavier guys wow that is one of the heaviest daily trainers. I know I did the first round review last week, but I forgot how much, how much it weighed. That's, I think the only shoe that's been heavier that we've tried recently is the Adidas Supernova Rise. Now these do have a little bit of water on them, but if you run in the rain with them, they'll be that heavy. So 292. So maybe this was in the 280s before the rain, but both of these went in the rain. So that's still a 50 gram difference between these two, which is pretty big. So Mach 6, a lot lighter. Nova Blast 4, a lot more protective. All right, guys, we got to do the wrap up inside tonight, and I have to use my kids are sleeping voice because, well, the kids are sleeping. So today we got 20 miles in across both of these shoes. Awesome day of running, 12 miles in the treadmill in the morning, and then eight miles with the stroller in the afternoon. So to kick things off in the morning, we did the first eight miles on the tread in the Nova Blast 4, and then we switched into the mock here for miles 9 to 12, and then this afternoon we did first four in the Nova Blast 4 and second four in the mock. Now guys, I am so glad that I do these run comparisons and put these shoes back to back in the same workout because oftentimes it exposes brand new things that I learned about these shoes that I didn't know before. So this morning, first eight miles in the Nova Blast 4 here, I already knew that this thing was super protective and it's a great shoe if your legs are feeling beat up. However, switching into the mock after that really showed how versatile this shoe is. And now that's one of the things that I loved about the Mach 5. I love that smooth rolling feeling, but I also love how the Mach 5, and it's the same thing that we're getting here in the Mach 6, feels good for just about any effort. Now, at any effort, you're gonna be running about 15 seconds faster per mile than you normally would because that's what this shoe does. It's got a soft bounce to it. It's not crazily rocker. There is a nice little roll up here in the forefoot, but it's really all about this soft foam. So this has gotta be one of the most fun shoes of running, but still a super versatile shoe like the Mach 5. And now guys, I don't usually do winners in these head-to-head -head comparisons because most of the shoes out there, they all have great qualities to them in 2024. There's a lot of great products on the market and 
different shoes are going to work better for different types of runners and if you are at a different cycle of your training. But this guy here, I think is going to work well for a lot of people. I said it in the first run review. I've said it in probably every single video I've done with it. It has enough protection so that you're not going to get a ton of ground feel. There's no bottoming out. I haven't gotten that so far. I do think I'm going to take it 16 miles soon. So look out for that video. The stability isn't the best, but you don't really need it in the shoe because most of the time when you're wearing it, you're going to be running faster up on the forefoot here and bopping right along. And so, like I said, I don't do winners, but this was the winner of the day for me, at least today. And it's not like I was super well rested and was trying to run fast all the time. When I put it on for the last four miles of my treadmill workout this morning, I just wanted to run fast in it. When I put it on tonight for miles 17 to 20 of the day, again, I just wanted to run fast in it. I dropped the pace down to about eight flat, which with the stroller probably converts to, I don't know, a 715 pace without the stroller. So in that faster aerobic or steady zone. And that is where this is gonna feel best, steady and faster, but it's a nice shoe for every single pace. Even when I was doing recovery running this morning in it, it has enough cushion and support so that the legs do feel protective. But now this guy here, this is a tricky one because we got this huge base of foam. It is a very stable shoe and that is gonna be the key benefit of it. So if you need some extra stability, go for this shoe. If you're not concerned about pace, go for the shoe. If you were going over two hours a lot of the time, go for the shoe. And so while the mock is a fun daily trainer, this guy is a protective beast of a max cushion shoe. Yes, you can use it for everyday miles. Every time I put on the shoe so far, it seems that other than the 22 mile long run, for the first 30 minutes of that run, I'm just thinking to myself, why the heck do I have this shoe on? It's way too much foam. But then as I get past that 30 minute mark, as I get past that one hour mark, get to 12 miles, 13 miles, 14 miles, that's when the shoe starts feeling really good and where the benefit, those qualities that were taking me off in the beginning, turn into something great. And so if you are looking for a non-plated long run shoe, this guy is one of the best that I've tried. And I've tried, I don't know, I showed you when I did the long run in this, I think probably eight to 10 different shoes. I'm not sure exactly, you guys can go back and count, but this is right up there with the best of the best. It has enough stack to be protective, only downside for long runs is again, the disconnected feeling where you heel strike sometimes, you bop down on the front and it feels like it's two pieces, but it felt like the more force I was putting into the shoe, the less I was getting that sensation, which is a really interesting thing. So if you are a bigger runner, a heavier runner, and you want something super supportive, this guy is gonna be a great choice. If you are a lighter, more efficient runner, I don't think you're gonna enjoy this one too much. It might feel like too much shoe, too much cushion for a lot of you guys out there who are very nimble, graceful forefoot runners. Now, because I was able to take both of these out in the rain today, let's take a look at the outsole rubber here. The Nova Blast was absolutely terrible. This is one of the worst rubbers I've ever taken out in the rain. And I generally don't complain about rain performance, wet weather performance, but this one was particularly bad. I did not feel confident going down hills and cornering with the stroller. It was not a great experience. And as you saw out there, I was slipping and sliding when I tried to do that grip test. Now, Mach 5 was a lot better. I'm actually really impressed at the rubber they're using in here. And I think this is actually my first Hoka training shoe that I've used that has rubber because I only had the Mach 5 before this. I had not been a huge fan of Hoka before trying the Mach 5. And so this guy is winning me over. Mach 5 won me over. And with the rubber they added, that is gonna be huge for this shoe. Now, you are starting to see some wear on the exposed foam here. It's not too much. I'm not really concerned about it, especially given how many miles I got out of the Mach 5, but that is something to note. And then same thing on the Nova Blast here. You can see we're chewing through a little bit of this foam, but the rubber coverage other than that is good. And even though the wet weather performance wasn't good, you can see that we're at about 60 or 70 miles now on this guy. And we're not seeing too much wear on the outsole. So I think the durability of the shoe might actually be decent. I have no concerns with taking this up to 300 miles. I'm gonna get it up to that 100 mile mark soon so I can do that 100 mile week review for you. And then depending on what other training shoes I have in my rotation, we will get this up to 200 at some point this year as well. And then the durability is my one last concern with the Mach. Hoka is not a brand known for their durability. And with this softer, super critical EVA foam, we might not see too many miles out of this guy, but only the miles can tell. So I'm gonna get this up to 100 soon as well. I'll do an update on how this foam is looking and then probably get it to around 200 over the summer. And I do see a world where this could coexist 
with the Nova Blast. But for an everyday running option that's fun, lightweight, simple, that's gonna work well for a lot of people, this is it. Yes, they bumped up to 37 millimeters of stack in the rear here, but it's not gonna feel like too much shoe for you. And I think most people are gonna be really happy with how this performs. All right, guys, so that is all we have for you tonight. Let me know your questions on both of these guys. Also, let me know what you want to see these compared to. I do have some new daily trainers coming in soon as well. So we'll get more comparisons out. I know you guys are super interested in more updates on the Rebel V4. So I'll make sure to get some videos out on that soon too. As always, I appreciate the support and we'll be back tomorrow with another video.